Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Byrne. I'm the Senior Director of Admission at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. We are really excited to have you on for a wonderful evening tonight with our honors webinar. There's so many things uh, that are exciting about St. Ben's and St. John's, but one of the things that's truly unique is our wonderful honors program and the honors uh, scholars that we have. So I uh, wanted to make sure that uh, we introduce some of our guests, and uh, we're going to get started right away. It's going to be a great night. Lots of questions uh, that people submitted before the uh, program began tonight. So on all your registration forms, we're going to try to get through as many of those questions as we can. I hope the panelists are ready to answer lots of questions, and um, we're excited to see all these smiling faces here. Um, I also want to acknowledge my colleague, Tom. He's in the background. He's doing some things on the back end, so there's be some links that he might be putting up. If you have questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, we want to try to get through as many questions as we can. But before we get to the questions from our students, I want all of our panelists to introduce ourselves. We have two fabulous professors joining us tonight, and we have four amazing students. So without any further delay, I'm going to let them kind of introduce themselves. And uh, you're all the stars of the show, and we're going to make sure we get these questions answered tonight to talk about all the wonderful th things in the world of honors, okay? So who wants to go first? Emily, uh, Beth, maybe one of you two? I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Beth Wengler. I am a professor of history at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University, and I am the director of the Honor Scholars Program. And I'm Dr. Emily Esch, and I am in the philosophy department at St. Ben's and St. John's, and I'm also um, an honors director. I'm the associate director of honors, and I've been at St. Ben's and St. John's for this is my uh, 17th year. Amazing. Well, now we have four fabulous students. Um, if you all wouldn't mind uh, taking some time to introduce yourselves, um, what you're involved in, what you're studying. Um, any um, pertinent or fun facts you might want to um, you know, talk about with the group on the screen tonight? Gotcha. I can, sure. I can go, first. go ahead, Alex. Okay, cool. Um, my name is Alex Flint. I'm a third year psychology major and music minor. Um, I'm, in addition to the honors program, I'm also involved heavily in the psychology department. Um, I've made great relations with professors. In addition to that, I also play in the CSB and SJU Brass Choir, which meets once a week on Tuesday evenings. Um, we get to play amazing brass music and the concerts are excellent. So I really am thankful for that opportunity. And additionally, I'm also involved in some other music activities like the Brass Studio. Um, this semester will be my last semester on campus as I am looking to graduate and I'm looking at graduate school opportunities, specifically at the uh, University of Minnesota for um, clinical mental health counseling for in infants and adolescents. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jacob Gecki. I'm a junior math major with computer science and English minors from Omaha, Nebraska. Um, and then on campus, outside of being in the honors program, uh, I also participate in cross country and track and field. I'm the editor in chief of the school newspaper, and I'm also an RA. Um, and kind of one of my favorite parts about the honors program is just the different types of people that I get to meet. Um, it's been such an awesome opportunity and a great part of my college experience. I can go next. Um, my name is Fiona Smith, also a junior. Um, I'm also a math major and <laughs> double minors in computer science and Hispanic studies. And I'm also a member of the cross country and track and field teams here on campus. Okay, my name is Equia Gibson. I'm a junior chemistry major. I'm also an RA just like Jacob and I'm involved in the chemistry department as a TA and tutor. Yeah. Oh, and I'm also an international student from the Bahamas. <laughs> oh. Well, what a wonderful group of students, um, student leaders, and just the kind of folks that, that we love having uh, in the Honor Scholars uh, program. So this is fantastic. Uh, we are going to open it up for some questions after 
Um, I think Beth and Emily are going to give an overview of the program, just so the panelists know, um, or actually the, the folks uh, uh, observing the webinar right now know, we're going to be giving away three sweatshirts tonight. And we're only giving away sweatshirts to people who ask questions in the chat. So in the Q&A, uh, that's where you can ask questions. We got all the questions ahead of time that you all sent, and we'll, we'll get to those. But if you ask a question during the webinar in the chat uh, tonight in the Q&A section, then we will be randomly drawing three winners for sweatshirts. So you know, if you wanna, wanna get geared up, you know, want some swag, uh, get a question in the chat and we'll get to that tonight. So I'm gonna turn it over to Emily and Beth, and I think you have an overview uh, of the program. And, and then after that, we'll uh, you'll have the students comment if they would like, and then we'll open it up some questions. Yes, and then the panelists will also give a chance to, to talk a little bit about their experiences. So after the overview, each of you students can talk a little bit about your experiences. And then, of course, uh, we'll open it up to all the questions. So take it away, Beth and Emily. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, welcome, everybody, to the webinar. And congratulations on being invited to participate in the Honor Scholars Program at St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, Emily and I are excited to talk to you uh, tonight about the Honors Program. She and I have been developing it since um, uh, 2017, um, and we are pleased to share the stage tonight with members of our first Honor Scholars cohort, who will tell you about their experiences in the program. But first, um, I'll explain a little bit about the program. Um, our Honors Scholars program is different from high school honors courses. I'll just say a little bit about that. Um, in high school, you take an, a course here and there, and what you learn in one isn't necessarily connected to another. Um, high school honors courses often have a heavy workload, heavier than regular high school courses. And what you learn in one course isn't necessarily, I mean, it, it, it tends to be more, high school honors tends to be more test oriented, more focused on, um, on individual achievement. So let me tell you about, you know, how this is different um, with our honor scholars program. Our, I think of our Honor Scholars Program as a learning community for academically talented and high achieving students. Uh, we know our Honor Scholars will graduate and become leaders in their communities and workplaces. And our program prepares students for this uh, by teaching collaborative leadership skills as part of our courses. Honor Scholars also invite students to apply their academic work to real world challenges through community-based research and service that's built into our courses. And I'm sure some of our uh, scholars tonight will talk about that. Um, the program itself is made up of five courses and there are a variety of topics offered for each course. They fulfill general education requirements that all students need for graduation. And our courses are meant to be taken over your four years as a program um, because each course builds upon the next. Scholars take them with their cohort, uh, which in your case is the class of 2027. Honors Scholars classes are small. They promote social interaction and encourage trust and collaboration among students. So that's like just a description of the program, uh, but to give you a better sense of what all that means, I'm gonna turn it over to the honor scholars who are here tonight, who are gonna talk about their experiences. I can start. Yes, because hey, we need to pick somebody. <laughs> no, yeah, I can start, that's fine. Um, okay, so like I said, I'm a junior and we have to take five honors courses over our entire time here. So I've already taken four. And to give you a little broad aspect and perspective of what I think about the honors program, I think it's great to put it short. I think it's amazing. We have great opportunities. We have, we make a lot of connections and we get to develop good friendships with each other. Um, I had classes with both Jacob and Fiona already, like a few classes. And since we are in a lot of small group classes, it's really good because you get to know your professor, first of all, and you also get to know your peers who you're gonna work with over the course of four years. Um, 
I know for me, my best experience with the honors program so far was last semester when I worked on developing a proposal for a community partner. It made me, it honestly made me feel good. It made me feel like I was making a contribution to the community rather than just graduating with something pretty like honors on my diploma. So yeah, this program is really helpful and it makes me feel like I'm gonna be an impactful leader in the world someday. So yeah, I'll just popcorn it to someone else. Yeah, I can go next. Um, I agree definitely with everything that Akoya said. Um, being mostly like in STEM classes with math and computer science, um, like the honors courses definitely give me a different way of thinking. Um, in addition to being able to meet intelligent classmates that are from all different majors and who are involved all over campus, like you can see with us four, we're just like we're in sports, we're in music, we're in like we're just involved in everything. So you get to know people and like when you're walking around campus, you see people you recognize from the honors program. And um, so that was definitely a major highlight um, is just the other students in the program. And then also, like Akoya said, Akoya and I were actually in the same group for our community partner projects last semester. Um, and so basically what that was, was for the second half of the semester, we worked with a community partner to propose um, a resolution to an issue that they were facing at the nonprofit. Um, and so I learned a lot of skills of like working with my other team members, working with a community partner who um, like there were some things that were out of our control with, with the community partner. So that was good to learn like that patience and how it is to work in the real world. Um, so yeah, I'd say that was my, my best experience so far with honors, but honestly, all four classes I've had so far have really um, helped me grow and think and think in a lot deeper ways than I would have ever without the program. Fiona or Koya, could I ask you to talk a little bit about what your project was? Like, who was your community partner and what were you doing for them? Because we we saw in the, the questions that already came in that people are interested in this. So while you're talking about it, I thought a little more detail would be helpful. Yeah, I can. Oh, do you want to go, go for it? Okay. Go for it, Fiona. Um, yeah, so our group worked with Anna Marie's Alliance, which is a nonprofit here based here in St. in the St. Cloud area. Um, and they are a shelter for women who have experienced domestic abuse, women and families. So they have a shelter and they also have an advocacy program. Um, but our group was working with um, their staff retention issues. So kind of in the last few years, they've struggled to retain employees. And we had um, the first half of the semester, we had learned about economics and well-being and happiness. So we applied what we had learned in the first half of the semester to this community partner and researched different ways how we could possibly solve their problem and ended with a proposal that we sent them with um, three different possible resolutions to their challenge. I can go ahead and talk a little bit about my experience next. Uh, I'm just going to echo exactly kind of what Ikoya and Fiona said about just the people in the program are incredible. Um, just the students that you get to work with throughout the whole process, I think, has been my favorite part by far. Um, because students in the program are leaders across campus, as you kind of heard a little bit as we introduced ourselves, but also just genuinely good people um, and people that I'm really glad to see um, anytime throughout the day. Uh, I was going to actually talk about the community engaged project as well. Um, my group worked uh, with the Boys and Girls Club of Central Minnesota on trying to help address mental health, health issues that some of the kids they help struggled with throughout the pandemic and after the pandemic. Um, but I'll talk about a different class as well, just because we've already touched on that a little bit. Uh, the first honors class I took uh, was with a history professor who kind of his main focus is on kind of prison reform and things like that. And so lots of the classes that you're going to take throughout the honors program are with professors teaching about things that they're really passionate about and subjects that they kind of get to pick to teach about, which I think is different from some other courses that you might take that are kind of just like a basic biology 101 or some sort of class. But these are things that professors have spent their life learning about and being able to hear that from them is, is really incredible. So I'd say that was definitely another highlight of my honors experience. 
Yeah, so I would also echo what my three other honors colleagues have said. However, without becoming too repetitive, I'd like to add that um, the professors really make a huge difference in the honors program. Um, my professors, I've become close with a few of my professors as I've had um, one specifically, Dr. Merritt Nash, and I have had now two, three classes together. And in that, um, we've built a strong relationship, a strong uh, academic relationship where I feel that I can go to her with personal and academic issues and they will be answered, heard, listened to. And I have a really good, honestly, a really good friend out of that. And that's something that's really valuable to me is being able to make connections with the people that I learn from. And then I can turn that into learning from into more of a learning with experience. Fabulous. Um, well, we ha do have a few questions um, that are in the chat. Remember to, to all of our attendees for the webinar tonight, um, we are giving away three sweatshirts. And uh, well, we right now we have three questions in the chat. Oh, there's some four. See, now we're popping. All right, we got some questions to answer. So I hope you all are ready. We'll kind of start right at the top. Um, you know, we have a student who asked, is balancing the honors program difficult with things like sports, music, uh, the Bonner program? I know we have some athletes on, on this uh, call or this webinar tonight. We have some RAs that are heavily involved, someone involved in music. So how are you able to do it all? Is it able to, are you able to do it? Yeah, I can go first on this one. Um, I would say absolutely. I'd say honors actually fits really well into all of my other activities. And what I mean by this is um, Jacob kind of, Jacob, Fiona, and Ikoya all kind of alluded to the community aspect and the kind of cohort mentality that we have in the honors program. Um, one thing that I love about it is the support that we give each other. So for example, um, when we were talking about those community projects, we were in groups and that allowed us to learn how to distribute work and learn how to work effectively with one another so that we can still be involved in things like music. I didn't take a break from music. I was still able to pursue my passion and at the same time still achieve that goal of working through the honors program. And just to add on a little bit to that, uh, the intent of like the honors courses is not to give you extra work. It's to give you work with a group of people that you're going to kind of be with throughout the years and things that are really interesting to you and kind of addressing kind of bigger topics than you might experience in other classes. So it's definitely, I would definitely say it's a manageable part of my, my schedule. Yeah. And I will also add um, with the new curriculum that was introduced, integrations curriculum that was introduced um, when the honors program was first introduced also, um, there's like certain requirements that you need, certain types of classes that you need to take. And the honors program fits into all of them. And actually, I personally thought it made it easier to fit those requirements because it laid it out really easily um, in your four years, which ones you're gonna take, which um, like which distinctions of types of classes you're gonna take. So it's really, I wouldn't really consider it anything extra. I think it just fits really well into everything. Yeah, just going off of that, there are even a few classes that are outside of the required classes that you can take. I took an honors theology class, which was great. Um, they fit right into my schedule, even as an RA, TA, and tutor. They fit right in. It's not like any extra workload. It fits right in like a normal class. And and for the athletes, if you uh, your coaches are they pretty understanding about uh, you know your 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 life and commitment uh, academically, athletically, and in all the other areas that you have? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go first. Um, yes, I my coach is very supportive of my academics, balancing with my athletics, and I also always say that. Being on an athletic team actually helps me balance my academics more just because I don't have a lot of free time in my day. So when I do have free time, I know what I'm going to be doing and it helps me keep into a good schedule and routine. So I'm staying productive all day. Yeah, that's that's kind of exactly how I would describe it as well. And also the 
the honors classes are just like any other class where they're during the regular class times throughout the day. So I don't have to worry about that overlapping with practice. Um, if I ever have a class or anything that I need to go to that is academic related, I, my coach is definitely more than willing to, to say that's all right to go to things like that because we are we are students first, of course. Absolutely. Um, we're going to jump into some others. They're, they're piling in. We got 12 unanswered, so we got to get moving. Um, how specifically did the course help you with your project and what skills do you learn from honors classes that help ready you for projects and things uh, you do to, to help your community? A lot there. So Can I also just say, that's a really, really well-formulated question. So. Yes. Very well, impressive. I would expect that with honors caliber <laughs> students that are on the uh, webinar here tonight. You know, I don't know about the host here, but uh, the students on here are doing a good job. So it's all good. If no one else has anything, I can talk, talk a little bit about. Um, so the title of the course that I was in and Fiona Ikoya as well was titled kind of well-being and happiness. And so uh, we kind of looked at how I guess, different ways that people, uh, systems might affect people's well-being and happiness in different ways. And so that was really useful starting as we worked, started looking at the project is in looking at different demographics of different boys and girls clubs locations that my group worked in, uh, in St. Cloud. And so that was really useful as we kind of worked through the project and looking at ways, different solutions that we could come up with to help different locations. So that was definitely something that from the class that really helped with the project. I'm going to jump in and kind of take it in a little different um, perspective as unlike uh, Jacob, Fiona, and Nikoya, I took a different version of the honors for class. Mine was titled Community Histories, and we explored, well, exactly kind of what you would expect, um, community histories. Uh, we explored some of the history of the institutions, so St. Ben's and St. John's. We explored a little bit of the history of the greater St. Cloud area. And through this, we were able to formulate my team's uh, topic, which was the experience of international Chinese exchange, or excuse me, international students at St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, we kind of focused our time period around the 1970s and uh, lots of the social and political ramifications of the 1960s and 70s. Um, so, Without getting too in depth on that, I would say the specific skills that we learned the most were communication and collaboration. Those two things, which happen to be hallmarks of the honors program, are very that you can see them in the small details of the project that we do. So we learned how to work with community partners, we learned how to work with one another, and we learned how to work within the larger St. Cloud area. And Alex, just uh, to follow up, just tell them a little bit about, um, you know, what, where your project could go next, what you've discovered about the Chinese uh, student experience, how might that be used by the community? Yeah, so our group had envisioned a couple different solutions. Um, one solution that we kind of proposed was a documentary. We want to try to bring awareness to the community about the fact that there are feelings of unwelcome in the Chinese international community when they come to the United States. And we really felt passionate about this um, since we all believe that we want our community, specifically St. Ben's and St. John's, to be a microcosm and to be a spot for change. And we believe that when we can do like a documentary that can help or podcast or some very specific thing that will reach audiences in today's world. So we're looking at Students, we know that students like to listen to podcasts. They like to grab Spotify, Apple Music, wherever they get their podcasts, um, documentaries. We know that students would much rather watch a two minute video than read a 50 page journal article about something. And so we wanted to appeal to that specific audience. And therefore, we felt that that solution of the documentary would be great. In addition to the documentary, we could also see something like a, um, a brochure or a website going out with more information so that students can kind of access that. It's that first step, taking that first step to get access to information so that they can find more resources that we would have provided so you can learn more about the topic. Hope that kind of answers that question, Dr. Wengler. 
Yes, thank you. And you worked, uh, you know, in partnership too with um, the Stearns History Museum, so that they might take up some of those uh, products that that you may perhaps be implementing in Honors Five uh, in your senior year. Well, yes, not, not your senior. Yeah, this is your <laughs> senior year, but. I did. Uh, I should have mentioned that we were working directly with the Stearns History Museum, and that was part of that communication aspect I touched on earlier. Learning how to communicate with a partner outside of St. Ben's and St. John's was super invaluable, as that's a skill that we're all going to use. Fantastic. I know I like two minute videos. You guys are probably just knocking through those 50 page journal articles. So send me the two minute video. All right. Um, that's awesome. Um, all right. Let's look at another question here. How many students are in an honors cohort? And do you find it difficult to balance the honors program with your major? So who wants to jump in on that one? Um, well, I can just give you the number, um, you know, uh, within the cohorts where it's between 60 and 80 students in a cohort. So, you know, that would be, that's about, that's about what it is. So over the, you know, four, four classes, uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, and do the math for me, somebody can, <laughs> and I got two math people here. So, uh, about 240 people, roughly. Yeah, 240, 240, 250, yep. The mathematicians don't uh, don't don't correct my math. All right, just go with it. All right. So, but in a in a given cohort or class, uh, you know, uh, it would be about sixty to eighty. I'm I'm just gonna add generally what that ends up translating into is there'll be three sections of every course that we offered, and our classes are capped at twenty. Um, and so, so just, you know, roughly that's how that works. Sometimes we have four sections, but as you can tell from the students. We have different faculty from different disciplines teaching different sections of the same course. So everyone meets the same learning goals, but the content and the discipline they're studying might vary from section to section. And I'm assuming for all of you students, it just flows seamlessly with your major. There's really no issue at all with your with your major, I'm assuming. Is that correct? All the head shakes. That's good. Yeah, it it's like, a, I can't remember who mentioned it earlier, but it fits the requirements with the curriculum very well, um, which definitely makes it kind of easy and even like almost easier than usual because there's kind of a framework set out for us to follow. So it's definitely helpful. Yeah, I'll just reiterate, that's not an accident, right? So Beth and uh, Professor Wangler and I designed it intentionally to cover as many general education curriculum requirements as we could. So we packed in as many requirements as we could into the five courses. So none of them are on top of the requirements of the um, integrations curriculum. They're part of the requirements. And we, you even get a team taught, all honor scholars get a team taught course from two different ways of thinking. So it's like a twofer. <laughs> it's it's kind of like St. Ben's and St. John's. It's a twofer, right? I mean, come on. That's what we do here. I mean, it's awesome. All right. Um, well, I mean, are there any scholarships given through through the program? I guess that's one of the questions student a student asked. I don't believe there are any financial benefits, but there's way more value in the honors scholars program than just the the financial uh, the possibilities. But I mean, it's uh, it, it's an amazing program to be a part of um, for a student um, with, throughout their four years. Well, and I would just say there's lots of academic merit scholarships available at St. Ben's and St. John's, but they're just not tied to the honor scholars program. So I'm sure that some of our panelists have it. I'm sure a lot of our honor scholars um, students have it, but it's not just, it's just not tied to participation in the program. Correct. Um, are there costs for honors classes different from regular class costs? That's another question. No, and I would say because of the small size, you get even extra value by taking honor scholars classes. And as Professor Wengler pointed out, at least one of them will have two uh, faculty um, for one class. So, so nope. Um, I think it was addressed earlier, and I think someone said it was twenty. But the typical class size for the honors program is that tw is, was it twenty? Was I right when I heard that? Yep, that's the max. Okay. That's the maximum. Yeah. Good. Just trying to make sure I'm getting through all these questions. I don't want any of these questions to be unanswered. So 
That's great. Um, and can you choose the class or are you placed in the class? I guess that's another question that, uh, you know, people might be curious, but I know that I, that's probably a question I would ask myself and say, okay, how does this work? <laughs> Um, you'll choose the section um, of the class. So, you know, there's a, if you're taking honors uh, two, you can pick which section you want to take. Do you want to take the one that's, you know, about propaganda and art, which Dr. Esch takes? Do you want to take the one about scientific controversy that I teach, um, et cetera? Okay. Um, I guess uh, the, another question is, uh, what are the requirements to be in the honors program? And what are the problems? What are the requirements to maybe maintain and stay in it as well? I guess, and 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 that would be another question. I would I would probably want to throw in there too. What is the GPA? We kept it at 3.8. 3.8. I can't. We just had this conversation. And right, uh, we did. Um, but probably if you're here, you've probably been yeah, invited. You've, yeah, have, you've met it. Uh, yeah. Yes. I was like, anyone who's in this is probably invited into the honors yeah. program. Um, if not, you know, you can send a a, a question or or a private chat to to me, and and we'll make sure we figure that out. Um, but and, uh, you know, basically, very strong students um, who have done well um, and and shown uh, that they have the 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 potential to be exceedingly successful. I think are students that we're looking for, students that are really motivated and and want to. Um, you know, ha, you know, uh, pursue an opportunity like this. Alex, you had a comment. Yeah. So as you can kind of see, um, although we believe grades and stuff are super important as we're all striving to be the best academic people that we can be, we also understand that students, the process is what matters in the honors program, to be quite honest, the process of getting that grade. We're not so worried, so much worried about the outcome. We know that honors students are, to be frank, the best and the brightest. And so we're not worried about that. We would much rather have discussions and readings and creating projects and crafting ideas and then worry kind of secondary about that grade. So as you can see, even Dr. Wengler and Dr. Ash were like, eh, the grades, yeah, you know what? They're gonna get it because they're gonna put in that work and they're gonna, they're gonna basically trust in that process and allow the honors program to kind of speak for itself. I mean, I'll even say the maintenance grade, I think we have as 2.0 but it's not really an issue that ever, we have a 3.0? Okay. Um, this is not a punitive place, right? So what would happen is honestly, if this, if it happened that you had a bad semester and your grades dropped, we would reach out to you with concern and just say like, what happened and what can we do to help you? We're not gonna kick you out to be frank about it. So um, this is just, yeah, it's not that kind of place. I mean, the Honor Scholars isn't that kind of place, but St. Ben's and St. John's isn't that kind of place either. And we treat each person as an individual, and we do a, a very thorough and holistic review of every student and candidate for the program. So um, I think it's going to be, you know, a really nice match. If you're invited um, into it and, 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 and you're invited to, to be a part of it, I, I highly recommend you take part. It's just an, uh, an unbelievable opportunity for, for the students. Um, I guess here's a question. Um, is there anything you don't like about being part of the honors program? I see the wheels turning. I guess the only thing would be if you really don't like taking any classes outside of your major at all, that would be about the only reason um, that I think you wouldn't like the honors that I like. And I enjoy the fact that the honors program is different from the classes that I usually take, but it is different and you are kind of required to think in a different way. Uh, but I personally find that enjoyable. But if you're very like focused on kind of just only your major and only that, then I guess that could be a downside. Yeah, I would say um, the only thing I like don't like about it is that sometimes the classes really make me think hard and they're really hard things to think about. So it's really good for me, but you know, it's difficult and difficult things. You might not like them while they're happening, but they're good in the long run for sure. I would add on to what Jacob said. I, I would say if you're not interested in group work and group discussions and collaboration, it's not also gonna be the program for you. 
So um, if you're really academically motivated and part of that is like, you just like love to spend a lot of time like doing like logic problems or math problems or working in a lab, uh, then, then that would, it, you know, it's not designed for every high academic achiever, right? There's other ways if you're a really good student um, and you're really driven by your interest in chemistry and that's really all you really wanna think about, then honors probably isn't a good fit. It really is for people that have um, broader intellectual interests. Is that a fair way to put it, students? Though again, well, you have to take these classes anyway. Yeah. Well, and I also think it's a really, it's, it's a fabulous compliment to the liberal arts education and environment that we offer you at St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, we want you to have uh, the ability to communicate in many different ways and, and, and with many different people. So um, I think that, that the honors program only enhances that um, for our students here on, on the two campuses. Um, and it's led by the fabulous faculty who, who help them with that as well. So it's a wonderful thing. Um, I guess, uh, how do students, if they are at all able to continue their honors courses while studying abroad? Because I'm assuming you can study abroad and be in honors, right? Of course. So how does that work? Well, I can briefly say that um, because, uh, you know, the honor scholars courses, uh, most students study abroad junior year, right? So uh, there, are only, there are only five courses in the honors scholars program. So that's basically one course a year. So if you're abroad one semester, you would take the, an honors course the, uh, the semester when you're on campus. So it's, um, it's studying abroad doesn't interfere with honors or vice versa. In fact, I hope you all will take advantage of our fabulous study abroad programs. We have programs that go around the globe and I'm happy to, to have you uh, learn more about those study abroad opportunities anytime. So um, we can always talk about those. Um, I guess another question here is how similar is the honors program to international baccalaureate and are connections made explicitly, explicitly between classes or is it something left to the students? That would be something left to the students. We don't have that many, we don't have that many students that have been through the IB program. So we couldn't sort of depend on that as a background. Um, what am I saying something I think wrong? You're, I think, yeah, I think you're uh I think she's one the Joe's wondering uh how similar is it to IB? Um, and I actually don't know because I don't really know the IB program. And then it seems like it's a second question, are connections made explicitly between classes or is that something left to the students and the, okay. when we talk about the connections uh amongst among the classes that's made explicit we are building on um you know one class is building on the other as particularly um we have uh learning outcomes that are specific to honors that we are talking about in all of our honors classes like our liberal you know we talk about the liberal arts very explicitly uh, we'll talk about it, you know, particularly in honors two and in honors five. Um, so, you know, like we we try and make connections among those courses explicit. I think that's so. I think that's what you're asking. Um, how has the honors program helped you grow as an individual? So, all right, here you go, students. Here's your chance. I can go first again. Um, I think for me, it has really, really broadened how I look at kind of the world as a whole and the problems that affect people in different ways. Um, just kind of kind of learning how different systems affect people in different ways uh, and things like that. And also just being willing to think about really difficult questions. Um, like Fiona was mentioning earlier, like you're going to have to think in the honors program for sure. And they're there are often questions that don't really have like an easy, like, like a math like solution where it's just like, that's, that's the answer. That's it. That's right in front of me. And so like this fall, when we were working with the boys and girls club of central Minnesota, everyone across the nation, every, every school across the nation is facing issues with kids coming back from the pandemic with different sorts of mental health issues. And so being willing to being kind of bold to approach that problem has really brought me outside of my comfort comfort zone in all of my honors classes, and that that definitely has 
made me a lot better as a person and just made me better understanding of just people in general. I think it also helps to better like your personal traits. Like it helps to develop your communication skills and your collaboration skills. I know that before I got in the honors program, I didn't really like group work, um, but now I like group work. I think it's great. I think it's really awesome that I get to see different perspectives from people who are in different majors than me, um, because we all think differently. And sometimes we agree and sometimes we disagree, but like at the end of it all, we respect what we say and it all just blends together beautifully. So. I think learning specific skills like those made me a better person. Oh, can I just jump in real quick and highlight what you said about learning from people from different majors? Because that's something that you don't really, I think, realize, definitely not in, in high school. And I don't even know how much you all realize it, but right when your upper division courses in your Alex's psych courses, they're almost all psychology majors. And the nice thing about honors is it's going to always be a diverse array of majors in every single class. And that just isn't true of the classes outside of honors. Um, a lot of times they will be um, more heavily, um, you know, with majors and minors as you move through the curriculum. And for, I will say that for faculty, it's always been really fun to teach honors courses because of the disciplinary backgrounds are so different and students bring it into the classroom. So they bring what they know from their art, their art major or their chemistry major and, you know, your econ major. And it's a really vibrant part of the, of the honors classes. Yeah, I really like that uh, answer, Dr. Ash. That's, um, that's very true. I mean, the teammates that I had in for my community project, uh, one was a biology pre-medicine major, the other history and economics double major. Um, and then me with my little psychology and music minor. But um, <laughs> that, uh, with all that aside, um, really getting to hear all those perspectives and getting to see how different disciplines approach challenges and how they approach the same questions and as Jacob called them they're pretty difficult questions to answer um, really helped me kind of see different perspectives which I can really appreciate and that's how I've grown individually is learning how to see things from different majors perspectives I think the the kind of um, personification if you will of this was through my honors 204a gender and mathematics course that's probably hands down, probably my favorite course period at St. Ben's and St. John's. I would say it's above all of my psychology classes, even though I'm highly interested in psych. The honor, the gender and math really kind of shook my worldview for a little bit. And um, I won't give away why, or won't spoil it for you all. But um, if you have the chance, I would for sure take that course as it really changed the way I think about pretty much everything. <laughs> That was my favorite course in college so far as well. That one was awesome. Yeah, I'd say I agree with everything that's already been said. Um, and just going off of um, learning from different perspectives of different majors, we all are also coming from different backgrounds of like how we grew up. So people are going to have different opinions about the tough, like modern day topics that we're going to talk about. And you really start to consider all the different viewpoints for um like everyday topics that come up in our societies and you just learn to open up your mind and not just think about oh this is my opinion this is what or this is what my family thinks this is what I'm going to think I think coming into college that's also something that you're going to learn but especially with the honors program that you're going to really open up to a lot of different viewpoints and perspectives fabulous um how many community based projects do students complete within the program Um, well, I would just to kind of talk a little bit about the structure um, in honors four students, um, you know, at that point are working on a problem uh, in collaboration with their community partners. So a problem that the community partner would like to solve 
using um, the students' uh, expertise uh, to help them solve it. Um, and so uh, that's honors four. Honors five is where the students will execute or implement the projects, the research projects that they did in honors four. So, I mean, the it is, um, you know, it's kind of a two course sequence uh, in that you're doing the research in one and then you're implementing in the other. And so working again with the community partner to do that. Um, not to say that there aren't other kind of community projects or, you know, uh, experiential learning projects in other courses, um, but it, you'd certainly do it in Honors 4 and Honors 5. Mm -hmm. And there are also plenty of other opportunities to get involved in service and community service um, at St. Ben's and St. John's. We have a fabulous campus ministry program that does all kinds of wonderful work as well, and you can be engaged with that and still do and all and, and be engaged in all the other wonderful activities that all these students are involved in as well. Um, how is the grading determined? Are there tests or is it more projects and discussions? I would say it's more projects and discussions. Um, just from we've seen all the syllabi and stuff at this point, I think. So um, I, I don't know how many exams have you all had in honors classes? I'm guessing very few. Un zero. <laughs> yeah, I can't recall yeah. any. Yeah, exams. so projects. I mean, there will be essays and paper writing too, right? Project kinds of projects, but but yeah, um, yeah, it's not it's not test focused at all. Um, do you have to commit to the honors program to be offered the classes at registration? If so, how would one go about that? Yes, you do. Um, I, I, you. If you're invited, um, all you need to do is say yes. Um, so respond um, to the invitation with yes. Um, and I think there's a link in the invitation uh, or it's a link um, in an email uh, and you can, you know, you're, you're in, then you'll be eligible to be registered register for those courses. Of course, you need to make your $300 deposit, right? So you, you, you send your $300 deposit and that reserves your spot at St. Ben's and St. John's. And then um, you say yes to the honors program and, and you're automatically in. So, you know, for those of you watching right now, if you haven't submitted your $300 deposit, get with it, be a part of this program and get that $300 deposit in and be a Benny or a Johnny. Um, so if you decide to join, but things don't click well, is it possible to later opt out of the program? Of course, you'll never do that, right? But um, is that possible? Yes, it is not a lifelong commitment. So <laughs> if you take the first class and you decide it's not for you and, you know, that that does happen. It's, we don't judge you. It's complete, like, especially people that have, you know, they want a triple major or whatever, right? That there are, there's going to be times where it might not work with your schedule. So, um, so yeah, it is uh, possible to start and not finish. Um, I would also just say, because this question comes up a lot and I've already gotten some emails about it, but if you um, commit to the honors program, you are not actually committing to St. Ben's and St. John's yet. You're conditionally saying, if I attend St. Ben's and St. John's, I wanna be part of honors scholars. And also, I mean, making that $300 deposit, um, it is a refundable deposit. Now we hope you don't want it back because we want you to be here, but you can make that enrollment deposit or you can make that deposit decision and send that in to reserve your spot at St. Ben St. John's, reserve your spot in the honors program. Um, and we don't think you'll change your mind, but if you did, you, you do have the opportunity to get that $300 deposit back. Um, another question here, does the research paper the junior year correlate with the community project requirements for the senior year course? Yes. Great, in great, fact, great question. It's a great question. It is a great question. And yes, it does. So there are many uh, different research projects, small group projects and honors for in the different sections. Um, you know, and so a certain number of those will um, go on to be executed in honors five. So it will be, a you know, you'll take what you did in the um, honors four um, and execute that in honors five. So yeah, there's that connection. 
I'm just going to make that like specific. So Alex talked about one of their proposals to their community partner was a documentary. And there were some other ones too, but let's say the community partner decided they really did want to move forward with the documentary proposal. What would happen in five is the documentary would get made. So that's more specifically what the sort of connection looks like. Mm -hmm. um, will students work with other years in the honors programs? For example, will you know first year students work with juniors or sophomores with seniors or whatever combination mashup you want to talk about there? Does that ever happen? This is actually an interesting question of something we're working on right now. Um, as of now, no, because you do move through together as a cohort. But um, just a reminder, we started this program with COVID. So this is our COVID cohort that entered in uh, 2020, 2021. That was the COVID year, right? Um, and so a lot of the things that we had planned were put on hold. Um, and one of those is a peer mentoring program where we do try to put together like juniors and seniors with incoming students. So, so it is possible that that will start happening um, as early as next year. But as of now, that was one of the COVID casualties that did not, did not get implemented the way that we thought it might. But I can actually see in the in the next question that some things that are in the works, there's the honors hub, which is coming soon uh, to uh, uh, a renovated space that's going to be exclusively for honors, um, a place to meet, to hang out, to work on your projects, uh, to grab a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, hang out with your profs. Um, that's going to be, uh, there's going to be a space is, they, we've identified it and it's going to be renovated and that is hopefully going to open next December or January. Mm -hmm. um, are there other benefits, uh, you know, for students in the honors program? Obviously, the learning benefits, we certainly don't want to downplay that. But, you know, uh, whether it be a commencement or different kinds of things that, that students might have the opportunity that maybe other students might not um, necessarily get um, if they're not in honors. Right. Students who complete the honors program, the honors scholars program, will graduate with the distinction of all college honors. Um, there's also, uh, and students will receive a special gold cord um, as part of their graduation regalia. Uh, that will designate them as all college honors. Um, it gets announced and it's on your transcript as well. Um, those are a couple of benefits. Um, starting this spring, students will, honor scholars will get priority registration. Um, so yeah, <laughs> everyone's like, hey, that's not a bad deal. Yeah, you'll get to register first in your class. <laughs> um, so uh, for, for all, for your courses, all of your courses. Um, so that's, uh, that's coming um, as another benefit. It's a fabulous thing to put on a resume as well. Um you know, to, to say that you graduated with all college honors um, is also another wonderful benefit, I think, for students. So that's good. Um, I guess just to answer a couple more, I know we've got about five minutes left. It's been, Matt, the time has just flown by. My goodness gracious. I can't, has it really been 55 minutes? My man, I tell you what. Um, so who selects the community partners or are they pre-selected? Um, we do have, we were, uh, our um, experiential um and professional development office has made reached out into the community um, and has uh, you know worked with some of these established relationships with these community partners. Um, so we have quite a number of community partners to work with. Um, they uh, it, it it kind of depends on the subject matter of the course, the topic of the course, it, um, the kinds of projects that students are actually interested in. Uh, in doing may uh, determine who the community partners are that you work with. Um, uh, is there a limited amount of spots for the program? Yes, to some degree, right? Um, I, I, I think that that 
we are willing to try to fit in as many as we can, but uh, we do have, we do want to maintain our small class size. And so we want to maintain uh, reasonable size cohorts. Um, so there is a little bit of pressure to sign up early um, and uh, guarantee your slot. Um, that said, we also are, you know, try to work with people that are interested. And so again, that's kind of the place, the kind of place that we are is we don't have hard and fast rules about things like that. We would do our best to like make it work for you if you were really interested and we were filled. Um, and have there been internships or employment opportunities based on community projects related to the honors course for previous students? I guess that's to be determined, right? Because we're, this is our first class. Uh, this is our first cohort is uh, moving through the program now. Um, and these four are part of that. They've just taken their honors four course um, and begun their, uh, you know, have they have done their research with their community partner. Implementation is is our next step. And who knows what will happen? But you're certainly getting what's what's happening here is that you are learning to put your liberal arts education into action um, in a real world project uh, that where you're working with, you know, these organizations. Um, so uh, you're getting some really pretty valuable experience um, that, you know, if it doesn't translate into a uh, position with that particular partner, um, you can certainly, it's something that you'll want to talk about when you're applying for jobs. Well, I have a question for my for the four students on here. If you could go back and talk to yourself when you're a senior in high school, what would you what would you tell yourself to say, I'm going to go to St. Ben's and St. John's. I'm going to make the decision to attend St. Ben's and St. John's. So you're getting a chance to kind of go back in the time machine and talk to yourself as a senior in high school. Um, what would you tell them? Uh, what would you tell yourself? Because you're going to be hopefully telling it to the students that are on this uh, webinar right now. See, I made you think. See, you're you're really good students, so I gave you a tough one, right? Um, I can go first on this one. I'd say just like knowing where I am right now, my junior midway through my junior year, like the great experience that it's been here. Like I don't have any regrets about coming here. I don't wish I went anywhere else. So. I just say reassuring myself that this was the right decision to come here, um, that I'm able to balance my athletics and my academics, my personal life. Um, yeah, just that it was the right decision. I'd go back and tell myself that, yes, there are going to be so many different opportunities and ways for you to be involved if you go to St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, and I, I think this is probably a similar experience as a lot of the, the students on this webinar and in being involved in all sorts of different things in high school. And that was a big part of like who I am um, is that I do have multiple different interests and things that I want to be involved in. And that was kind of a big part of my choice in coming to St. Ben's and St. John's was I want to be involved in different sorts of things. I want to have leadership roles in different kinds of things. And I've definitely been able to do that. And that would just be something that I would tell myself to kind of kind of reassure myself that I was making the right decision. I guess I'd kind of tell myself that I'd meet amazing people and form really great connections here. Um, yeah, I really don't regret coming here, just like Fiona said. It's been a blast so far, and I think that it helped me to get where I am. So. Yeah. If I had to look back, I would tell myself or rather reassure kind of my preconceived notion that this place, St. Ben's and St. John's, will not limit you in any capacity, whether that's the honors program and the people that we've alluded to that you get to work with in your cohort, whether that's through your athletics, musicianship, um, all of your classes, all of your community-based learning, all of your liberal arts education. This place provides so many opportunities for you. All you have to do is kind of take that first step. And that's kind of what I would pass on to myself would be do it. Just take that first step, kind of take that chance and put yourself out there and then see what happens. 
well, the students listening to this webinar, you are the next, you know, uh, honors superstars that are going to be here at St. Ben's and St. John's. You're going to be the people that, um, you know, uh, you know, Dr. Ash and Dr. Wingler are going to be, you know, um, collaborating with and, 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 and they're going to be teaching you over, over the next uh, several years. So, you know, we want you at St. Ben's and St. John's. And I think, you know, colleges sometimes, you know, you know, they have all the pretty pictures and beautiful things, but they just don't come out and tell you, hey, we want you here and, and you are unique and you're talented and you have so many gifts and we want you to come share them with us and be a part of this amazing honors program at St. Ben's and St. John's. A couple little housekeeping things because it's 831. I, I don't want to keep people too far too long, um, but we do have a few wonderful events coming up. Um, we do have a few more webinars coming up. We have one coming up um, uh, on February 4th, which is for parents. So all of you wonderful students, please have your parents join us on February 4th for the webinar there, um, specifically geared toward parents. Um, some of you asked about study abroad. We have a study abroad webinar coming up on February 6th. So we hope you'll tune into that and learn all about the amazing uh, opportunities uh, to study abroad um, with our global center here at St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, I know some students are interested in nursing and, and we have a nursing webinar coming up February 13th. And then we have a financial aid webinar February 15th. And all of these can be found on our website. Um, not making, don't want you to feel like you have to write them all down, but uh, you can find them all on our website. Um, and then we have some in-person events. Not everything is virtual. We all like being in person together and being together with each other. So we actually have a fabulous reception coming up on Wednesday, February 1st down in the Twin Cities. I know some of you are from out of state and you can't be there, but we're gonna hopefully get you on campus with one of our flying weekends. But if you're anywhere in the Twin Cities area or you know St. Cloud or Rochester and you um, have the chance, we're gonna be hosting a Twin Cities reception for accepted students at Best Buy on February 1st. That invite is out in the, in the emails for all of you right now. Please um, respond and join us at the, the Best Buy reception on February 1st. We've got delicious desserts. That's not the only reason to come, but uh, you'll get a chance to meet our new president of both St. Ben's and St. John's, uh, Dr. Brian Brees. He'll be there. We have some fabulous faculty. We have wonderful current students, um, and it's just going to be a great evening and, and, and lots of information for you um, to learn about. Also, we have some accepted student days coming up in February and March. Uh, we hope you'll attend one of those on campus and join us on an accepted student day. And then if you're from out of state, and I know some are, um, we have some fly-in weekends coming up uh, in, in March and April, and those are always a lot of fun to come out and be a part of a fly-in weekend and spend some time on campus to see what it's like to, to maybe live a little further away from home. So um, lots of opportunities online, lots of opportunities in person. We want to get to know you. We want to answer all of your questions. Um, this is really the beginning of the journey for you, and uh, we want to make sure that we're with you every step of the way, um, not only through this process of, of making the decision but actually once you're here at St. Ben's and St. John's for your four years, and then as you travel in life after as an alum, as a Benny or a Johnny. So I wanna thank everyone for, for their um, attention tonight. I wanna thank all of our panelists, the students, Dr. Wangler, Dr. Esch. Um, any, any last minute words before we sign off on this great event? I would say feel free to email uh, uh, Dr. Wengler and I, or one of us, if you have any follow-up questions or I think there's some questions we didn't maybe quite get to. So please don't hesitate to follow up uh, with an email. Yeah, um, and do you wanna drop that in the chat maybe, um, if that would work for everybody, if you're willing to do that? And also some of you, you have gotten the emails about the honors program as well. So you certainly could respond to any of those emails about the honors program. And that that would probably be a better way to do it as well if you wanted to do that. Um, yeah, we'll include the kind of, yeah, we'll make sure that it's out there. So um, just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. Um, I, again, thank you all. It's been fantastic. I, I kind of don't want it to end, um, but I know we've all got busy lives and uh, I know our students and, and attendees have busy things going on too. But for the students, just remember, um, we do hope you'll we'll see you at St. Ben's and St. John's. Please send in your $300 deposit and uh, we're hoping we'll see you at future webinars and on campus. And, and we want you here for a, a four year stretch starting in August. So let's get you on campus, all right? Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.